Hey everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley, and today we are going to play a great old serial for you. This is The Spider's Web by Columbia Pictures 1938. This is starring Warren Hall. Now, I, I like Warren Hall, and he did a bunch of cool serials. In 1939, he does Mandrake the Magician. Uh, in 1941, he goes over to Universal, and he does uh, The Green Hornet Strikes Again. And then in 19... Uh, yeah, the same year, 1941, he comes back to Columbia and he does The Spider Returns. So, uh, cool actor and uh, he, he brings a certain level of jacundity to this role that you really don't have in the pulp magazine version of this character. You know, in the, in the pulp magazines, the spider was, was really more known for uh, being one of the more violent pulps. Uh, a little more grim, but for the serial, you know, they softened it a bit. And it, it's, a, it's a fun, it's a fun serial. I really enjoy it. So, sit back and watch. This is going to be episode number one through five of The Spider's Web. Get away with this, I tell you. You can't get away with it. Gentlemen, these crimes will ruin the transportation industry. We know that, Chase, but how can we stop them? We're powerless. The Bankers Association is heavily involved in your respective organizations. If you go out of business, the credit system will be seriously impaired. They can't stop every service line in the city. Something's got to be done. Get the police. Well, that seems to be our only recourse. Working for the octopus is all right. If I only knew who he was, I'd feel better. Yeah, I like to know who's paying me. We have Mr. Roberts here, as you ordered, sir. Bring him to me. You men wait outside. Return when I call you. Good afternoon, Mr. Roberts. Come in.
What kind of tomfoolery is this? This is my office, Roberts. Does it surprise you? Just why was I brought here? I am frankly interested in your company, Mr. Roberts. I have judged as much from your threats. Hints. Not threats, Roberts. But some people can't take a hint, and therefore they must suffer the consequences. Look behind you, Mr. Roberts. They interest you. The exact location of all your depots, bus terminals, main branches, and routes. How did you get this information? Getting information, Mr. Roberts, is my business. Using that information, where do I fit into those charts? You don't. You will be eliminated as an obstacle. Tomorrow morning, you will be no longer chairman of Roberts Company Incorporated. My man will take your place. You're crazy. I am quite serious and equally sane in my undertaking. Tomorrow morning, I will control Roberts Company Incorporated. And very soon, I will have control of every key industry in this country. I will have the very nerve centers of the nation in the palm of my hand. You're a madman. I'm getting out of here. Not so fast, my friend. I have no desire that you leave just now. I'll have the entire police department down on you. <laughs> the police haven't helped you so far, have they? Then I'll kill you myself before you can commit another one of your crimes. It shouldn't be difficult to choke the life out of you. Send for me, sir. Take our late friend, Mr. Roberts, and place him near the river. Be sure the police find him. And don't make any blunders this time. I uh, won't fail. Tomorrow morning, I'll be in complete control of Roberts Company Incorporated. And that's only the beginning. Our next move is to see that Mr. Richard Wentworth joins our friend. Nothing but peace and happiness ahead. Somehow I just can't realize that the great Richard Wentworth is finally going to settle down to a quiet life with a wife and flower garden. From now on, we're chasing rainbows, not crooks. Even though we are going to be married, Dick, I wonder which is more important to you, face powder or gunpowder? If you were wearing gunpowder, then it's gunpowder. Now, Anita, we've waited too long for peace and quiet, and we're going to have it now. And if anyone tries to stop it, it's going to be just too bad. Boo, the spider gives his warning. Uh-uh, not the spider. As far as I'm concerned, my other half has put away mothballs. Our honeymoon plans begin where the spider ends. As long as I'm with you, look, there's no more spider, no more trouble, nothing to keep us from our trip. I've heard you say that before. I'll prove it to you. Around the boat, mystic blue waters. Ahead, the busy, crowded port of Hong Kong. The boat is docked. It's our first stop. Our luggage is on the pier. The customs man is examining it. Missy Wentworth no bring American perfumes in China. All he say me smell like cheese. Missy Wentworth too pretty wear cheese. All he say me wear lotus blossom. Bravo, bravo. At least life with me won't be monotonous. I'll be a different man every 10 minutes. Keeping track of Richard Wentworth will be enough for me. We must be close to getting in. I'll call Jackson and get the weather. NC8R6 calling W4HQ, Wentworth Airfield. W4HQ answering NC8R6. Come in, Major. Hello, Jackson. Passing over Westchester, about 20 miles out. Give me the weather. Visibility clear. Ceiling unlimited. West wind, 12 miles an hour. Thanks, Jackson. Good old Jackson, Jenkins, and Ram Singh, my three faithful musketeers. W4HQ calling NC8R6. W. Too much disturbance, Jackson. Try to break through. Come in, Jackson. I'm waiting. So we'll have to land without Jackson's help. I'll take over.
thief. Who's that guy? That's Ram Singh, one of Wentworth's men. Are you all right? Sure, but I'm glad you're here. Oh, he'd no sooner starts for home than trouble catches up with us. I'm gonna go outside and make sure that cable's up. We can't take any chance on that Wentworth. Right. Mike. Okay, Joe will have the cable rig in a minute. Here he comes now. Come on, let's get back and hang and finish those guys. Come on. Joe, come on. Another clip, those guys taking pot shots at him. Get out there and try to land him in the rear. Okay. Ahead, Jackson. Okay, Major. I guess an aspirin will fix me up. Sahib, are you all right? Never better. Now listen, Ram Singh. Nita just landed in the meadow. You get her into the city as fast as you can. I think the Jefferson Highway will have the least traffic. Now hurry, because there might be trouble around here. Immediately, Sahib. Jackson, what's this all about? Why well, the attack? I... That's probably Commissioner Kirk now. He's been trying to reach you all afternoon. Maybe he knows what's going on. broken loose. Some madman is trying to cripple the transportation of the country. You're telling me. They just raided my place here. Got a couple of prisoners for you if they're still alive. So they're after you, too. Get down here quick. Oh, wait a minute, old man. I can't get mixed up in this. I promised Nita that I... I can't help what you promised. You're not going to stand by idly while hundreds of lives are threatened. The man behind these attacks just had the audacity to phone me. Says he's going to blow up the Jefferson Highway Bridge in ten minutes. I just sent Nita and Ram Singh over that road to town. I've got men on the way to stop all traffic. But they may not be in time. I'll be in time. I've got to be. I'll see you at your office later. Something wrong, Chief? You wait here until the police arrive to take care of the two men you knocked out. I'm going after Nita and Rand Clink. To the city immediately. Sahib's orders. Is he all right? Never better. all cars. Attention, all cars. This may be in your district. Bridge on Jefferson Highway threatened by dynamiters. Hurry. That is all. Well, I suppose this means my wedding is again postponed. Prophet has sat down. Danger is a brave man's first love. Yes, Ramsey. But it's kind of tough on us girls.
Ma'am, get the first aid. It's a bad cut. Darling. I'm all right, Dick. It's only a bump. I'm all right. It was an attempt to kill the Mem Sahib? No, but it looks like part of the plan to destroy the transportation system. We're taking Nita to the hospital. Get to her back about 100 yards. We'll take this car and pick up the roaster later. Fine way to start our honeymoon. If Dr. Gaylord says you're all right, we'll start immediately. I'd like to know who's behind all this. I thought you would. Now you can get a little sleep. Neither's going to be all right. Just a little rest and quiet, and she'll be as good as new. Ah, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gaylord. That cut looks pretty bad. Don't let it worry. Just let her rest. And that means no visitors. All right, that's fine, Doc. I'll see you on Nita later. Nita's okay. Take me to Commissioner Kirk's office right away. Lieutenant Sir, we've been expecting you. I got here as fast as I could, sir. He's tough, sir. Smarter than any other man I came up against. I've never slipped before, have I? You'd better not slip up again. Nothing will stop me. Wentworth or any other obstacle in my path will be destroyed. Any trouble, Mulvaney? No, sir. He's been quiet as a mouse. We're going to see the prisoner. See that we're not disturbed. Yes, sir. Monk, Commissioner Kirk, we want to ask you some questions. man's dead. Strangled. Dead? But how? Right here in the police hospital? Do your eyes smart? There seems to be an acid vapor in the room. Medicine, probably. I don't know of any medicine that smells like that. Has anyone been in the room? Nobody that I know of. <laughs> Kirk, come here. There's your answer. A strange gas vapor has been released here. This gangster that was killed at the hospital was one of the Gallagher gang. It was indicted some time ago. Oh, yes, I remember. That's the gang that tangled with the spider. A murderer operating against murderers. Kirk, I think you've got the spider all wrong. As far as I've been able to find out, he always tries to help justice. He has never attacked an innocent person. No man has the right to take the law into his own hands. A judge and jury can decide what's right or wrong. Another type for you, Commissioner, just came in. Alan Roberts, head of the big bus company, has been murdered, shot. Man. I'll see you later, Kirk. I've got to get over to the hospital and see Nita. A few pennies, mister, please. A few pennies. Oh, I guess so. Take it easy, Went, but you're covered. That's right, buddy. You're covered by all of us. All right, come on. Move over toward that car. No squawks. <laughs> Looks like your job is complete. Get in, cut the gas. Hey, are these blindfolds necessary? Take the blinkers off. They don't know where they're at anyhow. Hey, what are we going to do with these guys now that we've got them? The octopus says to hold them until further orders. Get going. Come on, come on.
looks like home. You've been here before? Yes, at the old Gallagher hangout. I've been here many times as Blinky McQuaid. I'll probably see some familiar faces. Got to get rid of it. I'll go. Oh, wait a minute. I've got it. shooting of Alan Roberts, head of the bus company, who was just found dead. I'm going to find out. Get me a chair, please. Take no chances, Sahib. Warrior, I spent years in the underworld as Blinky McQuaid, learning the ways of thugs. I earned the reputation of expert safecracker. I learned the prison language. I won the confidence of those fellows. I've been repaid many times. They know Blinky McQuaid. They won't kill him. As always, you are right, Sahib. Now you get down the fire escape to the car and stand by at the corner. Be careful, Sahib. Right. Don't you think you're going to have a little excitement? It's all right with me, boss. Running around here? In house. Yeah. One of them run right into me. Suddenly. Which way did he go? Right down that way. The other room. Okay. Harry. Hello, Blinky. Where you been? Oh, just cooling off after a hot job. Where are you going? To masquerade ball? Got to take a bus to the terminal. See you around. Please throw a pack on the floor. I want to have a fine time explaining this. Oh, that's tough, please. Hey, I saw Harry Stone going out of here in a bus driver's outfit. What's up? Hey, wait a minute. You in on this job? No, but I'd sure like to be. I'd like to get back in action again. Well, you should have been around here earlier. There was a job, fixing up a bus with a charge of dynamite. Say, that's your racket, ain't it? Sure, it's right down my alley. Maybe it's too late for me to get in it yet. No, no, they've already left for the West Terminal. They're gonna blow it there? Yeah, nine o'clock. That joint will go sky high. Ah, uh, well. Too bad I have to miss the fireworks. So long, Blakey. So long, Blakey. What time is it? Like wholesale murder at the terminal at nine o'clock. 
quarter of the hour now. I know. We've got to get there. Every second counts. Yes, Monster. Take after that guy. Spider prepares to strike again, Monster? Yes. And sudden action is necessary. The law is to handicap by red tape. So, to save human lives, the spider operates outside the law. The monster is wise. The police. Someday they might catch the spider. The noose already dangles over his head. We have to take that chance, ma'am. Five minutes of nine. We have two more blocks to go. We've got to empty that terminal as quickly as possible. I don't know which bus holds the dynamite. Now, here's what we're going to do. Three minutes. Pass the word to be ready for the getaway. All set. Place is full of killers. We've got to work fast. You know what to do. And in the next episode, you will see Richard Wentworth, aiding the police, narrowly rescues police commissioner Kirk from the octopus in a room filled with deadly gas. The octopus captures Wentworth's fiancée, Nita Van Sloan, to hold his bait for Wentworth. The spider, throwing off an attempt to catch him, ends in another trap set by the octopus. Will he escape? <laughs>
regretting the reign of terror that followed in the wake of the octopus, Police Commissioner Kirk enlisted the services of Richard Wentworth, famous criminologist. Into this conflict entered the spider, a mysterious masked Robin Hood created by Richard Wentworth to strike terror into the underworld. Only the members of his own household know that the spider is in reality Wentworth. Although always on the side of justice, the spider has at times been made to appear guilty of the very crimes he was trying to prevent. As a result, the spider stands accused by law as a dangerous criminal, and the police headed by Commissioner Kirk are constantly on the hunt for him. In his most recent contact with the forces of the octopus, Richard Wentworth was caught off his guard and made a prisoner. Taken to one of the gang's hideouts to await execution, he learned that the octopus was planning to dynamite a big bus terminal, an act of terrorization that would cost the lives of hundreds of innocent people. Making his escape, Wentworth donned the costume of the spider and went into action. as soon as you're sure no one is following us. Sorry about that terminal job, sir. want me again. I shall not want you again. No deaths reported as a result of the explosion. Two unidentified men killed by gunshots. The spider was seen leaving the building one minute after the explosion, escaped in the traffic, followed by car 27, car 27. No report from car 27. That is all. The spider again. I'll get him if it's the last thing I ever do. Yes? Kirk speaking. What's that? The spider. Have this call traced quick. I'll try to hold him. Uh, hello. Who did you say you were? Don't stall, Kirk. You heard me. I just wanted to give you a tip on the terminal job. You ought to know, Mr. Spider. You were there. Right. And if I hadn't been, you'd have half a hundred citizens in the morgue instead of a few gunmen. Now listen, Kirk. I'm in a hurry. That gang has a hideout at 722 Center Street, the old Gallagher place. You'd better look it over. Have a squad car ready for me at once. Men with riot guns. Well, you can't trace the call. It was tapped in. Stand by here till I get back. Well, Warrior, the spider now becomes Richard Wentworth again. Come in the rear door. 
Now, men, don't take any chances. Kirk. What? What the devil are you doing here? Now, don't get excited, Kirk. This is my second visit to this crook's hangout tonight. The first time I came as a prisoner. Prisoner? Yes. I've got something to tell you. Wentworth with the bulls. We better scram. We got our orders. The plan goes as set. Can you tell me where they had the bus driver? I can make a good try at it. Come on. his arm. He's gassed, but I think I got him in time. I, I, I'm all right now, boys. I... Thanks. Oh, forget it. Come on, let's get him out of here. My opinion, Commissioner, your police are not making any progress. And I think these gentlemen agree with me. We're faced with a difficult problem. I had hoped that with the assistance of Richard Wentworth... And so had I. And what has he done? Why isn't he here now? Wentworth promised to be here at 3 o'clock. And I always keep my word, gentlemen. Oh, hello, Wentworth. How do you do? Have you any news? Well, what have you done? Can you tell us who's responsible for these atrocities? Not yet. But I believe their latest move has opened up a line of attack for us. Or perhaps you noticed this item in the paper this morning. Listen. J.R. Adams appointed head of Roberts Bus Lines. The appointment to fill the place occupied by Alan Roberts, recently found murdered, caused considerable surprise, as Adams seems to be unknown in transportation circles. Unknown in transportation circles but probably not unknown to the madman responsible for the murder of Alan Roberts. I'm already working on the Adams lead. Now, if you gentlemen will allow me to speak to the commissioner, we'll keep you informed of our progress. Certainly, sir. Sure. See you later, commissioner. Goodbye. What did you learn? I cut in on Adams' private wire. There has to be a meeting at his office tonight. Nice work. I'll have a squad ready to raid. No, no, not that. This criminal is too smart to be caught in a trap like that. But uh, I intend to see and hear everything that goes on in that office. I have good reason to believe that Wentworth will make a move against Adams tonight, either alone or with the police. Adams' office will be a most excellent place to carry out my plan. This is it. Here, phone. Now get the equipment out of the car and set it up in the basement. Yeah, Adam's office. Hey, what is this? Hello? Telephone company, testing. Yes, all right, we have some men in the building. We'll take care of your trouble at once. Right? Right. We're from the telephone company. Got any trouble on your line, Miss? I'll say there is. You nearly knocked my head off a few minutes ago. Yeah, fix it in a minute. The bill, you better check that service line over there. Right.
It'll be all right. Shorten the transmitter. Okay, thanks. All right, Bill. The monster's coming. Television set ready? Ready and willing. Did you place the little receiver? Right in Mr. Adams' bookcase. Everything ring? Yes, sir. Light. They should be there by now. Turn it on. How the sound? It'll take a moment for it to warm up, Chief. Good work, Jackson. It's clear as crystal. I, uh... What's our next move, Adams? I don't know, Martin. I got my orders to be here like the rest of you. The octopus said he'd speak to us at 9 o'clock. It's about 9 now. Attention. The octopus speaks. My plans to seize control of certain key industries are progressing. But we must stop the interference of Richard Wentworth. To accomplish this, I am sending you a hostage. Your prisoner, gentlemen. Allow me to introduce Miss Nita and Sloan. Nita! The fiends of darkness, let me... No, no. You stay here. Jackson, come with me. The octopus is right. I'll step into that trap. But not as Wentworth. The spider strikes again? Right. Come on. mean death for Nita. My attack must be a complete surprise. The very entrance is guarded. Not that one, the hoist. Do what you're told and you won't be hurt. Tie him up. Hurry, Jackson, throw that switch. I'll stick with you with my handkerchief. Go on, take me up. touches a doorknob, he'll be annihilated. Train your guns on the door. You then cover the girl. touch it. It's wired. Throw that switch. Turn off the power. Now get in that hole. Hold of it. Come on, step on it.
next episode, you will see Richard Wentworth as Blinky McQuaid working his way into the underworld in an attempt to gain inside information. The octopus, always aware of what is going on, sends his men after the spider. Richard Wentworth as the spider trying to avoid a trap set by the madman known as the octopus plunges to certain death. Will he escape? <laughs> leader known as the octopus has begun a systematic attack on industry in an effort to seize control of the commercial arteries of the nation. The octopus, a genius for organization, is making progress in his cruel and ruthless campaign in spite of the forces of law and order. Not even his own followers know the true identity of the octopus, but they fear him to a man. Attacking the key industries one by one, the octopus employs the severest methods of terrorization to gain his ends. In the wake of his criminal activities lies a trail of bloodshed and destruction. In an effort to combat and overcome this growing menace to peace and security, Police Commissioner Kirk enlisted the services of his old friend, Richard Wentworth, famous criminologist. Unknown to all but a few immediate members of his household, Wentworth has created a character called the Spider to aid in the war against crime. A mysterious and masked figure, the Spider has become a symbol of awe and terror to the members of the underworld. Through his activities on the side of justice, this modern Robin Hood has frequently been accused of the very crimes he has attempted to prevent. As a result, a price has been put upon his head by police and criminals alike. While engaged in tracking down the octopus, Richard Wentworth learned that Nita, his fiancée, was being held captive by the forces of the octopus. Disguised as the spider, Wentworth fought his way to the girl and rescued her, only to be trapped by the overwhelming odds. With the stairway blocked by the paid killers of the octopus, the spider escaped with Nita to the window by which he entered the building. As the spider and Nita were lowering themselves on a hoist, guards posted on the ground by the octopus succeeded in releasing their hoist control, causing the two to hurtle to a certain death below. Yes, thanks, boys. Take both cars and go to my house. Aren't you coming with us, Dick? There's still too much work to be done, Nita. But, Dick, it's so dangerous. It may be an opportunity for me to find out what's behind all this. Don't worry about me. Go with Ramsey. Behave yourselves. 
Where's your car? Out and back. We're going someplace where we can have a nice, quiet talk. Hurry up. Hicks, shall bring the cops around. We'll tail them in our car. You phone the octopus. All right, car. spoke to you over the radio. The brain's behind your criminal activities. I don't know. Come on, think fast. All I know is that the boys call him the octopus. That car with the blinding lights is following us. It must contain some friends of yours. Now, Adams, you better talk and talk fast before it's too late for them to help you. I don't know who the octopus is. He's orders come by radio. I've never had any personal contact with him. Why, step on his way, sir. I'm doing the best I can. Well, chill the right so he can't see us. Get ready to jump, Adams. You're being in a very bad humor. Oh, not with you, dear. That's the reason. Look at that. Is it the spider's work? <laughs> Anything for a newsflash. Terror and chaos in the city. Transportation jeopardized. Lives in danger. Buildings blown up. A master criminal at large to continue his crimes. And all because a few thugs are killed, the cry goes up, get the spider. Every time the spider strikes, all we see is the act, with never a thought for the real reason behind it. I wonder what they'd do if they knew that I, Richard Wentworth, am the spider. That's one thing they must never find out. I've got to find the octopus and destroy him. I had hoped that Adams would give us a lead, but... Do you remember that thug we recognized in the office last night? You mean Frank Martin? Hmm. That's one of his names. He belongs to the underworld. I've got to contact him and gain his confidence. Oh, so Blinky McWade comes to life again. Hmm. Oh, Dick. Major. Pardon me, Dick. What is it? I thought so. Now I'm sure of it. Sure of what? A couple of Kirk's men are watching the house. <laughs> He's right. Men to watch me. Well, that makes it nice. What are you going to do now? Darling, you need some flowers. I need some flowers? Jenkins. Well, Jenkins, phone Roy and tell him to send over my special flowers. Yes, sir. Well, darling. Blanky McQuaid and the spider walk tonight. In spite of those fellows. Hello, Roy. Send over Mr. Wentworth's special flowers in a hurry. I certainly do. Nita, help yourself. This is all I need. Oh, they're beautiful. Glorious. 
This is a useless job. He's not coming out of there. Hey, listen, Bill, long and a half hour for his coat and truck. See, he's got the old hack ready. Thanks. Never mind, I'll come back later. The spider must be removed from our path no matter what the cost. Our next move toward power will be carefully planned and executed. But our main objective is the destruction of the spider. Hi, Martin. Hello, Blinky. I come by you earlier. So I heard. What do you want? I need dough, Martin. For me? Well, not exactly. I thought maybe you could let me in on something. You're making the safe too strong for you now? Gee, I could still open them like cracker boxes if my eyes wasn't slipping. Can't you eat me in on something? Hmm. Blinky, you've always been a guy that could keep his mouth shut. Tell you what. I got a job on for tonight, one of my own. You can drive the car. Swell. It's down at Carson's warehouse, down by the river. Stick around, because we start early. Okay. It's a big job for the boss later. Maybe I can get you in on that. Thanks, Martin. I'll be right on tap, whatever you want me. Must be inside. Careful, men. Come on. Come on. I want to him. Well, you'll ask. Christy, didn't he? Yeah. Is that drugstore near here? Down at the corner. Is the guy all right? He's okay. Make it snappy. I gotta get lined up on the big job. Oh, yeah? You ain't gonna forget to ease me in on it, are you? No. All right, I'll be right back in a flash. 
Hello, hello. Jackson, I've got some work for you. Yes? Yes, sir. All right, I'll be there. How about a little drink while we're waiting? Yeah. Who is it? Oh, no, it's the boy. Scram, scram. I'll take care of myself. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Go on, I'll stall him for your getaway. Where's your partner? What partner? Quit stalling. You ain't got nothing on me. Only the warehouse job. I got an alibi. You better have. Come on. Come on, come on. Nice work, Jackson. What's it all about, Major? Well, I learned things. I had to ditch the gang. The only way that I could shake Martin. Drop me near the West End powerhouse and then call the police. The spider strikes again? Right. ordered this job done so there wouldn't be a light left on in the city. That's the way you'll get it. We'll have it all washed up before an alarm can be raised. Are we all set? Yeah. All right. We're moving through here. Episode, you will see Richard Wentworth in his fight against the octopus is attacked by the paid killers of the arch criminal. The octopus daring and cruel destroys property and innocent people in his desire for power. Nita Van Sloan, Jackson and Ram Singh, friends of Richard Wentworth, trapped in a room rapidly filling with rushing water and doomed to death. Will they escape? <laughs>
wonder wilderness known as the octopus threatens the very foundation of civilization. The police have found it difficult to cope with. No one has any clue to the real identity of the octopus, not even his own men. These he rules with an iron hand like a tyrant on a throne, leading them on with promises of wealth when it suits his purpose and driving them through fear when they hesitated carrying out his cruel and ruthless plans. The objective of this mad leader is supreme power. To secure it, he has begun an organized attack on major industries aiming to gain control of the lifelines of the nation. To combat this reign of terror, Police Commissioner Cut has enlisted the aid of Richard Wentworth, wealthy clubman and famous criminologist. Into the fight, Wentworth brings the spider, a mysterious masked Robin Hood, who is held in awe and fear by the underworld. Only the immediate members of Wentworth's household know that he and the spider are one and the same person. Although always on the side of justice, the spider is forced to work outside the law in order to effectively war against crime. As a result, the spider is frequently charged with the very crimes he is attempting to prevent, and so becomes a hunted man by both the police and criminals. The mad ambition of the octopus to gain control of all industry is now reaching out to grasp the city's lighting system. Through connections in the underworld, Wentworth learned of this plan and disguised as the spider made a single-handed raid on the criminal forces trying to destroy the power plant. You're all right, dear. Jackson's woman by the sleeping and told me all about it. I told Miss Nita all I knew, Major, which isn't much. We don't know a great deal. If we could only determine the objective of the octopus, we could form an organized plan of attack. The one straight line that we have is that he does things in a big way. He wants more than mere money. First the entire transportation system and now our power plan. Mm. Last night's attack may be the beginning of a new campaign of terrorism against the Bureau of Power and Light. That's it, utilities. You see, he's tackling each thing in turn. Organized crime with more than money as a goal. He wants control. That's why men like Adams and Roberts died. Jenkins, call that bishop of the county gas company and ask him if anything unusual is occurring. I told him to keep his eyes open. Graham, call Al Vance at the city water power company and ask him the same thing. Jackson, you call the... Take it, Graham. Hello? Just a moment, please. Sahib, it's Charlie Dennis. Hello, Charlie. What's up? Say, I finished building that radio set, and I want to thank you for all you taught me about radio. Gee, it's working swell. Have any success? No one's ever broadcast on the Hertzen band before. That's what I called about, Mr. Wentworth. Some mysterious stuff came over a couple of minutes ago, and I can't figure it out. Sounds like somebody testing, but it keeps up. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Try to keep them tuned in, Charlie. I'll be right out to your place. Goodbye. While I'm gone, check those people, and also the tri-state outfits. Come on, Nita. The car ready? Right, Major. Eyes open, Jackson. Anything come in? Every few minutes. B-13-6, M-12-3, R-9-4, Y-7-2. There he is now, but I can't make out what he's talking about. B-13-6, M-12-3, R-9-4, Y-7-2. Seven, two. He's off the air. Now listen, Charlie. If anything else comes in, write it down and call me. I'll be at my lab. Yes, sir. Here. Buy some candy for the kids. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Charlie, old man. See you later. We'll take Nita home.
Jackson, you were with the Communications Bureau at one time, weren't you? Right, Major. Whoever broadcast this message certainly didn't want the police to hear it. There isn't a police set in existence that operates on the Hertzen band. This is Whitey talking from house number three, sir. Some guy found our wavelength, sir. He's built a set to receive and send on the Hertzen band. It's important that he and the set be destroyed immediately. Do you know its location? Yes, sir. He's located in Stonewall on Lane Avenue. The Hertzen band must be kept clear. Hurry. There's no time to lose. We'll take care of it right away. Let up? Yeah. It only took three gallons, sir. That's a nice looking radio set you got in there, kid. Looks kind of homemade. Uh, build it yourself? Yeah, I built it. It's kind of slow around here, and I got plenty of time to experiment with it. Gee, kids, that's too bad. Too bad? I don't understand. What's too bad? Now it's beginning to make sense. Look. Prepare all cars to move for raid, 8 o'clock. Further orders broadcast quarter to 8. What sort of a code was it, Dick? Rather simple once we found the key. Webster's Dictionary. The dictionary? Yes. The letter meant the section. The first numeral meant the page. The second numeral meant the position of the word on the page. And I suppose it all spells more trouble. I don't know. There's only one way of finding out. Whatever's going to happen tonight at 8 o'clock must be stopped. Dick, let me go with you. Nita, darling, you've got to stay here. Jackson, you stay here, too. Goodbye, dear. pockets and your mouth shut. We're going on a little trip. I found Nita's compact on the floor, and that's a sign of trouble. Yes. Now, wait there for me. A message has come, Sahib. Nita and Jackson are safe. The voice said, you will get another message tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? I could not trace the call of dogs, the fiends. You believe them, Sahib? About Nita and Jackson being safe? Yes. It's reasonable to believe that the octopus wants to get me. Therefore, he'll need them alive. You know, there may be some connection between that code message and the abduction. Ram, we've got to get out with the triangulation machines and locate that station. We'll set up our machines a half mile apart and then check the compass points. I have my machine right here. Now, you set up yours right about there. I understand, Sahib. Hmm, it's almost 6 o'clock. We haven't very much time to locate that mystery station, and we must do it before 8. At 6 o'clock tonight, every radio station in the city must be put off the air. The power tubes in each studio must be destroyed. The airlines kept clear so that my message to the city at 6 o'clock will not be interrupted. And no slip-ups. Let this serve as a warning to your city. At 8 o'clock tonight, the 
entire city will be plunged into darkness. Every power plant will be destroyed. Last night, my plans at the powerhouse were frustrated. But this will not stop me. I am the octopus. Commissioner Kirk, you and your entire police force are helpless to combat me. It's unbelievable. The man must be crazy. We've got to locate him and stop him. Give me your figures. Send out all the emergency trucks available. Get the riot squads over to those stations. Stop the panics. I don't know what that broadcasting set is in a minute. Broadcasting stations at the point where those two lines meet. The triangulation system never fails. Come on, we've got a lot of work to do before 8 o'clock. Shouldn't have much farther to go, Ramsey. Not far, Sahib. The spider prepares to strike again? Yes. Decisive action is necessary. The law is handcuffed by too many rules and regulations. Therefore, the spider has to operate outside the law to save human lives. But Master is wise. Please still search for the spider. We have to take that chance. Hurry. We must proceed carefully, Ram Singh. This may be a trap. No, Ram Singh. Give me your knife. I thought, high voltage. What do we do, monster? Careful, Ram. The broadcasting room must be on the right side of the house. The aerials are hidden in the trees. See where the wires lead down. I'll go to the left side of the house and attract their attention. You try to get into the broadcasting room and smash the set, but keep under cover. As the prophet saying, he who treads the path of evil shall meet with evil. I shall ruin the pig. Good luck. Ready to chirp? Never. You'll get nothing out of us. Pigs, you're wasting your time. All right. Last for it. Lock the door. Right? Right.
next episode, you will see Richard Wentworth, Anthra Spider, break into the octopus hideout, ruin the radio broadcasting set to prevent the octopus from sending his death dealing orders. The octopus tortures Nita Van Sloan, Ramsing, and Jackson, friends of Richard Wentworth. And a benefit performance, hirelings of the octopus by a point blank at Richard Wentworth on the stage. Will he escape? <laughs> trembles as the octopus, a mysterious menace, rises from the underworld in an attempt to control all industries. Richard Wentworth, famous criminologist, offered his services to Commissioner Kirk of the police department. Into the criminal battle waged by the octopus steps the spider, whose mark strikes terror into the heart of the underworld. Scientific knowledge, Wentworth traced the broadcasting station of the octopus to a house in an isolated country district. Disguised as the spider, Wentworth and his faithful servant, Ram Singh, fight their way into the house. Ram Singh is overcome and thrown into a room, rapidly filling with rushing water. The spider is trapped in a room filled with poisonous gas vapor, and torrents of live steam are blasted on him.
Seder. Don't talk, Sahib. The place is wired. We don't have to worry about that now. I destroyed the radio set completely. The activist won't broadcast his orders. Look out the door. Sahib, take care of me. All right, Jackson, the coast is clear. You all right, darling? Quite all right. All right, Major. Yeah, that was a close one, boys. Nita, from now on you're going to stay home. Not as long as you're in danger, Dick. Sweetheart. Well? Whitey's been killed, sir. It was the spider. He smashed our broadcasting set and broke out the girl and the two guys from the water room. plans for tonight. For the moment, we must abandon them. First, we must get the spider. Now clear out, all of you. Word has gone out all over town to get the spider. I found that out as Blinky McQuaid. Spider must be a thorn in somebody's side. If he is, that's just fine. Richard Wentworth will get a chance to do a little investigating while the spider takes a vacation. I don't understand what you mean, Major. Well, it's certain that the octopus is trying to draw the spider out into the open. Is that right? Sure. All right. If that's what he's trying to do, we'll give him a dose of his own medicine. We'll try drawing him out into the open. Dick, you're talking in circles. Am I? Is there any sort of public event going on in the next few days that's out of the ordinary routine? Well, they're opening a new bridge tomorrow. No, no, not that, not that. Wait a minute. I've got it. The benefit for the bus driver's family. But that's right. They're holding some sort of a show right in the bus terminal. Get my trunks out of the attic. I'm going to do my old magic act. Your old magic act? Right. Hello? Hello, Morris. This is Wentworth speaking. Oh, hello, Wentworth. How are you? Now, your paper is friendly to the Roberts Bus Company, isn't it? Yeah, we're practically running the show for them. That's swell. I'd like to give them a little help myself. You know, I used to do an amateur magic act, and I thought perhaps I could get out my old props and come down and do my bit on the show. You certainly can, Mr. Wentworth. Your name as a famous criminologist would be a big drawing card. Thanks a million. Goodbye. Sing tomorrow night? Yes. Is he still such a crack shot? Crack shot? He's always, always been handier with a knife. What's on your mind, Kirk? Has he been arrested for speeding or something? A house was raided last night, and the place was cluttered with dead men marked by the spider. And a turban was found on the scene. Who are these men? Uh, gangsters? That's beside the point. The turban. Ram Singh wears one, doesn't he? Well, yes, but what does that prove? What do you know about the spider? Why? <laughs> He seems to be a perfectly nice sort of fellow, as far as I know. Goes around punishing people the law hasn't time to catch up with. What do you know about him? Stop beating about the bush, Dick. <laughs> what do you want me to say? You don't think I'm the spider, do you? I don't know what to think. But I'll tell you this much. 
the police department will receive instructions to concentrate on the spider to get him dead or alive. Perhaps I can help you. You know, Kirk, you amaze me. First you asked me to come in here and help you stop this wave of crime, and then you turn around and practically accuse me of being the spider. If I didn't know you so well, I'd get angry. Yes? Mr. Morris with the call in fire to see you. Send him in. Perhaps he's come down to sell you a couple of ducats. Take a look at this, Commissioner. The spider again. May I see it? Doesn't the spider usually leave his mark of identification? That's right, Commissioner. What would the spider want with a benefit show? He might want to attract our attention to the benefits so that he could operate somewhere else. That's only theory, Kirk. But with a threat of this kind, you should give protection to the people attending the show. Naturally. Policemen will be assigned to cover every square inch of that block around the terminal. Perhaps Mr. Wentworth would rather withdraw from the program. No. It would be better that I appear and save a lot of embarrassment. Oh, it may be just the work of some crank. Play the story up big, but give it the horse laugh. I think you're right. There's a certain breed of crank that's always writing letters. We get them regularly. Advice, criticism, threats. This note is probably from one of that type. Spider has nothing against me, I'm sure. I've never caught him. Well, till I see you, gentlemen. So long, Dick. Goodbye, Miss Whitworth. So you see, that fake note means more than Kirk realizes. I don't need more than one guest to tell me who sent it. Who, the octopus? Well, of course. He's setting a trap to catch both the spider and Richard Wentworth at the same time. But he hasn't things figured out as cleverly as he thinks. Nita? We've got to be letter perfect in our routine. We'll do our share, Dick. There's a great deal at stake. I see by this evening's paper the note was delivered. Very good. Bulls are walking into the trap just as I planned. With Wentworth on the stage, it should be an easy matter for you to get him. Dick, I wish I knew what was going to happen tonight. You know, you have a nice habit of plunging us into the midst of excitement before we even know what's going on. Well, if we all stick together, darling, we can sort of watch over each other. Jackson, everything packed? Everything packed, Major. All right, pilot in the back of the sedan. Right. All set, here we go. Quickly, Ransing. Here we are. Well, Mr. Wentworth, I'm glad to see you. Allow me to show you to your dressing room. Thank you. Now, those are the plans. Nita, you go and get into your costume. Jackson, set up the machinery. Ram, you stay here and watch. I have to go and see the chap in the box office. Hello, Dover. Hello, Mr. Wentworth. I was wondering when you get here. I appreciate your help in my plan. I still don't know what it is. I'm sorry I can't tell you the details. But remember, when I give you the signal, I want you to make sure that all the tickets you sell are in a special group. I want to keep a certain bunch of people together. Friends of yours? Well, not exactly. You call them business acquaintances. Oh, I see. Uh, pardon me. Sure. Give me three tickets down first. Sorry, we're almost sold out. But I've got three nice ones in the 15th row on the aisle. Will that do? What do you mean, sold out? The box office just opened. Sorry, will you have these tickets? All right, come on, give it to me. We've been framed. We've been given these seats on purpose. Yeah, but we can't make no squawks. Mm. I got an idea. Get up to the spotlight there and take over. What's your idea? Just this. When Wentworth gets up on the stage, flash the spotlight on him and we can't miss. All right. Dick, but I'm worried. Oh, don't worry, darling. We're a cinch. Pardon me. Uh, we're ready, Major. Right. Dick, I've got my fingers crossed. Good. Let's go.
Ladies and gentlemen, the next number on our program is the famous criminologist and magician, your friend and my friend, Richard Wentworth. Ladies and gentlemen, with your kind permission, we will now take you to the land of magic and mystery with our guide, Mr. Richard Wentworth. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Episode you will see Nita Van Sloan, fiancé of Richard Wentworth, become a target of the octopus killers. Continuing his reign of criminal activity, the octopus sends his henchmen to carry out a daring bank holdup. The octopus, in an attempt to eliminate Richard Wentworth, has his killers bomb the famous criminologist. Will he escape?